Hey guys, MTG Noob here. Welcome to my pre-release primer for tricks and removal spells. Uh, this is kind of your bread and butter primer in a sense where if you don't really know the spoilers, these are the things you're going to get blown out by. So I'm going to do this in, you know, the five colors. I'm going to start with white and I'm going to get right into it so the video doesn't take forever. Raise the Alarm is a 2 casting cost. Put two one one White Soldier uh, creature tokens into play. This is really good because you might think you have a clear path and then you end up with these two little weenie blockers or they could gang up and take something out. Um, it's also good at end of turn when you're not expecting uh, you know, a certain amount of attackers coming through and might lead yourself, leave yourself open and vulnerable. So look out for that raise the alarm. Next is Devouring Light. I really like this exile target attacking or blocking creature. It's nothing special. It's nothing you haven't seen before. Um, although it does have Convoke. So you got to be careful even if they have, you know, uh, two man up or one man up or no mana up and they have three dudes and they just tap them and they're just like oh oops sorry your dude is dead uh, which is really really nice it also exiles because you know in black there are some reanimation effects this is an uncommon so it's less likely you'll play against this but I assume if you see somebody's in white they might have this card so be careful okay I'm Imperial Shields. I, didn't, I don't think I said that right. I apologize. I just, you know, I never read good <laughs> or well, whatever you want to call it. I was always in the slow reading group when we used to have those back in the 80s. I remember, uh, tangent, I remember one time I got in trouble. Uh, I like got promoted to the, the next good group at reading and I couldn't read the word can't. I don't know why I couldn't read it. I just was like, Kuh, can't. And it's not like I said like the C word that guys aren't supposed to say, if you know what I mean. I was just like, Kuh, can't, can't. Uh, and then I got demoted back to the not good reading group. Anyways, this one is really a blowout if you're not careful. It's common which worries me because you may be playing against two or three of these. It's also a Convoke spell, so like I said, they got a white creature up or a white creature and another creature up, and boom, you just have, uh, you know, this guy's indestructible, and that's pretty awesome, especially if you're using your combat tricks first, and then they just blow you out with this. So watch out for this. Don't let your shields be down. Oppressive Raise is kind of a pseudo removal spell. It's just more a pain in the butt. It's very nicely casted at one white mana because of the fact that it uh, really slows the aggressive strategy down. Uh, Enchanted Creature can't attack or block unless it's Controller Phase 3, and Activated Abilities of Enchanted Creature cost 3 more to activate. So let's say you have something like a, a mana elf well you just throw this on it and it's going to be slowing down let's say they have a giant nerd coming down early you throw this on it and they're going to have to spend their whole turn attacking and that's really nice and you know what's also good is you, you usually think of something like this offensively but the fact is the creature can't block either unless it pays three so that's very very significant as well. Then you have Pillar of Light, Exile Target Creature with Toughness 4 or greater. This is a good one. Um, it's more situational, but I think you definitely play this, especially in Sealed where you are in a slower format, you want to get to your big fatties, and this one does a great job of taking a giant out of the way. I mean, uh, just look at like a Sarah Angel is gone or a Sengir Vampire is gone. A lot of things have five toughness. Some of the walls start with, you know, four or five toughness and they grow over time. Or if something, uh, an aura, like plus two, plus two aura is thrown on it, then 
you know, this uh, can take care of it. So make sure you look out for this. And it, it's nicely casted at three mana. Okay, Divine Verdict. It's a staple. It's been around for a while. Destroy target attacking blocking creature. No questions asked. You'll definitely be playing against this. If you see a white man up with three other mana, just be careful. Uh, you know, it's target. So if you have a way to prevent that, but most of the time you really can't, it's good because... They can't choose, you know, it's not like you swing with three guys and it's just destroy an attacking creature. It's pretty much a creature you have is going to die. Sorry. Okay, now these last two are... I just threw them in here just in case. Uh, creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. White creatures you control also gain first strike until end of turn. So Sanctified Charge is pretty good. It's like a mini overrun. Uh, it's exactly like Inspired Charge, except for the fact that Inspired Charge costs an extra white, but it, one less mana overall, and it uh, doesn't give white creatures first strike. So I think Sanctified Charge is more of a blowout, since I'm assuming you're playing white, and there are going to be the benefits of first strike but either of these especially in a weenie strategy will kind of close the game out for you okay now I'm going to go into our red spells okay let's get to red crowd's favor is a common that just is like eh, I'm gonna punch you in the face and you're not expecting it because I have convoke if you can't tell there is a recurring theme with the convoke uh, removal spells in this case a pump that also gives 1-0 and for a strike, I think this will blow a few people out if they're not really expecting it. Uh, it's more or less a cheap trick that will be played in a an aggressive red deck. I don't think it's a very good trick. We've seen tricks like this before. It's kind of in the 20 to 23rd card. Like, if you're really low on playables, uh, I'm not a big fan. But, hey, it could blow somebody out. Heat Ray is something I've played in the past. I like it. Uh, you spend one red and X and you get to smoke a giant creature most likely it also stops uh, the burning <laughs> early uh, man mad puns <laughs> about fire uh, the one thing it doesn't do is deal damage to a player which is a little bit disappointing I'm sure people would rather have fireball or some fireball s type effect but it's still a good one especially during combat it, it blows things out if they try to go for a pump or a kill and you just remove something with it lightning strike is you know just pretty much lightning bolts ugly cousin uh, but it is what it is in today's society we have to pay an extra mana but three damage to target creature or player is pretty excellent um, for two mana you can't go wrong it's pretty much the go-to removal spell in red i would say it's well costed it gets the job done and anything with reach three damage to a player's face is really nice when you're trying to close out the game then we have the new one stoke in flames which is not the name of the card it is stoke the flames uh two red and two Convoke also on this one. Uh, this is just four damage to target creature or player. Uh, this one is uncommon, whereas if you look at Lightning Strike, it's probably staying at common. So this will be a little bit harder to get. However, it is very sweet. It kills your problematic things. It reminds me a little bit of Chandra's Outrage, which was better, but this does have Convoke, so you can do this at end of their turn to remove a creature, and then still have all your guys untapped for your attack phase. Uh, this is probably the best red removal spell outside of Lightning Strike. Then you have Seismic Strike, lots of strikes, all the strikes. Uh, this just deals damage equal to the number of mountains uh, you control to target creature. It's a solid removal spell. It usually gets the job done, but anything situational sometimes doesn't allow you to get as much value as you would like. Like, you may have to trade a creature if something has a huge rear end. 
uh, you're not going to kill it with this, uh, assuming you're playing mono red. And it gets a lot worse in two color decks, and it's virtually unplayable in three color decks. Then you have Blast Fire Bolt, which is not something I really like. Uh, it does kind of have a bonus, but with not too much equipment in the set, the bonus really isn't that great. Um, you may catch somebody with it. It deals five damage to target creature, and that's pretty nice, but if I'm spending six mana, I want to make sure I'm killing something regardless uh, if it destroys all the equipment attached or not. But a lot of the things in this set do have five or less toughness, so this should get get the job done but don't go saying oh i i opened 10 blast fire bolts i'm playing them all in my deck because you will definitely regret that okay and then i believe finally cone of flames comes back it's five mana and it basically goes one damage two damage three damage or one strike two strike three strikes you're out and it's really a, a great removal spell because of the fact that you could kill little things and then you could kill slightly larger things and then you usually could kill something for three damage most of the time. Uh, it is sorcery speed so you can never really use it during combat. You know, you can attack into stuff and then finish stuff off. But uh, the thing is, you can't say, oh, I want to deal six damage to a player. It has to be three different targets. Okay, uh, now let's move on to blue. So here we have Void Snare. Return target on land permanent to its owner's hand. It is a sorcery, so it's not going to be such a, a big blowout. But it does make in uh, auras fall off. It does return planeswalkers or really problematic creatures to players' hands. And it's cheap, so you just got to be careful about it. But you're not going to get blown out at instant speed. Okay. Hydro Surge kind of sucks. <laughs> um, I just put it in here. If you get blown out by Hydro Surge, you're probably winning anyway. It's just not a very good trick. It does nothing to the toughness. Um, worst case scenario, you lose a creature to it, and you're probably losing a card for a card. Uh, there, there's nothing that that really beats up Hydro Surge. It's just, it's just, it's not a good card. I just put it in there just so you can be prepared for anything. Squirtle wants to shoot you with a water gun. Squirtle's going to shoot you with a water gun. All right, I tried to order these counter spells in the right order, but apparently I didn't, so I apologize for the uh, confusion. Here we go. Turn to Frog. Uh, great art. Two mana until under turn target creature loses all abilities and becomes a blue frog with base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. And the flavor text is just Ribbit, which I love it. I dig them if you get that reference. It's a serial reference. Um, this is a great trick. Uh, your best dude becomes a 1-1 one, one, and uh, you know most of the time you'll be able to kill a 1-1 one, one in combat, blocking, attacking into it. Um, you might be able to ping it out uh, with something. You know, just there's a lot of way. This is pretty much as close to a hard removal spell in blue that you will see. Okay, Quickling is actually a creature, but it has flash, and I think it's going to be used a lot of times to block, but it's also going to be used to save a creature uh, of their own, because when it comes into play, uh, sacrifice it unless you return another creature you control to its your the owner's hand. Um, it's also going to be used in con conjunction with anything that has a come into play ability. So be careful for this. This is a, an uncommon, but it's a nice little 2 2 flyer that is great in combat. It could come in and it could block, it could come in and it could bounce something, it could come in and it could play some tricks with things that come into play, have come into play effects. Okay, and they have Peel from Reality, return target creature you control and target creature you don't control to their owner's hands. Just a, a decent bounce spell. This is as good as you're going to get at this stage in this, in this core set. Um, it's nice because it saves a creature, let's say from combat, 
Uh, and it, it can potentially be a blowout if, you know, you swing for lethal on the way back. I don't really like this spell. I think it's decent, though, and, and, and it's good enough. It's a good tool that Blue has to use. This is a rare uh, Polymorphous Jest. Um, until under turn, each creature target player controls loses all ability and becomes a Blue Frog with base power and toughness 1-1. One, one. Uh, lots of ribbits. This is going to be a blowout in combat. Luckily for you, it's a rare, so you're probably not going to have to play against this too much. But this is as close to a Wrath of God effect that Blue is going to get. Like I said, turning everything into a 1-1 one -one is just nasty, especially in conjunction with some of the black cards that... Uh, give i think there's a black card that gives everything minus one minus one and then there's another one that i think it's minus two minus two i could be wrong when i get to black i'll double check but this is gonna hurt some people's feelings unless you like frogs then go you okay you have some counter spells now you have negate sorry for the crappy picture um counter target non-creature spell usually you don't play against this in the main deck but if you are running something really powerful like a planeswalker or one of the uh avatars or just a bomb that people can't uh deal with i'm sorry you can't counter the avatars but i mean something on that level you're gonna have to be cautious because people will bring this in against you then we have into the void uh return up to two target creatures to their owner's hands it's sorcery so it's not not as amazing as it would be if it was an instant oh my god imagine this as instant speed but this is great because you know blue tends to play a very slow game and if you go two drop three drop and then they go okay bounce your two drop bounce your three drop most likely you're not going to be able to re-establish that tempo as quick as you would like okay aether spouts i've already covered in the cards i like but this is really nice because you know they swing into you and then you bounce their creatures to either the top or the bottom of their library they choose but it really screws with their draw it screws if they go for an alpha attack they go all in and they're, they're swinging for the fences and then you're just like you just have no team left and you're not even going to get to replay anything this turn because it's not bounced back to their hand which is really exceptional this is also a rare so you probably have to play against it a little bit, but not as much as usual. Okay, uh, Chrono Stutter, put target creature into its owner's library second from the top. Eh, you know, at six mana, it's it's not amazing. It's it's okay. I don't anticipate you playing more than one of these in a deck. Uh, it doesn't really remove the threat, which kind of sucks. So uh, it doesn't make it like amazing for me uh, especially since it's six mana it does slow the tempo down a little bit but what are you going to do okay dissipate just a hard counter it removes it which is nice that blue has dissipate back in standard for some more time uh, i always like dissipate it's just a good counter spell and as you know blue just fights with counter spells Okay, I think I've covered everything except for these two gems. Cancel is pretty much the same thing, although the spell goes to the graveyard. Usually you're not playing against counter spells at pre-releases, so keep that in mind that you're like, oh my gosh, I have to worry, but there's a few solid counter spells, and since it's a slower format, counter spells do get played more. Okay, uh, Statute of Denial counter target spell if you control a blue creature draw a card then discard a card so it's kind of like a little bit of card advantage if you have an extra land you chuck it it doesn't really do as much but another counter spell isn't the worst thing in the world okay let's head over to the green cards here we have gather courage uh just your basic two two for uh one green mana also you can tap a green creature to play it for free it's a really nice trick. It is uncommon, so got to be a little bit cautious, but not too cautious. But if they have a green creature and it's untapped, you never know if this thing's coming out of the woodworks. Better on offense than defense, but uh, really good either way. Then you have Hunt the Weak, which you've seen in M14. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control, then that creature fights target creature you don't 
control. It's a sorcery speed, but it's green removal. Everybody knows that green creatures, just like the Irishmen, like to fight like Seamus. <laughs> um, anyways, it's usually a solid removal spell. Worst case scenario, you're paying four mana to put a 1-1 creature on your guy. Uh, but overall, it's, it's a pretty solid spell. Overwhelm, I just threw this in here because I miss Overrun. Um, I thought they thought maybe saying Overrun and Overwhelm are exactly the same. The only benefit that this has over Overrun is that it is one less green, although two more colorless mana, and uh, it has Convoke. So you technically can give all your guys plus three, plus three, for free but then you won't be attacking with anything so maybe you have a crappy guy that you don't want to use and you use it for convoke but even crappy guys 1-1 one, one elvis miss elvish mystics get into the fray when they become four fours uh, i still think this is a one of in a green deck it does win games the lack of trample makes it a little uh, i shouldn't say a little a lot less awesome but it's still a game winner this is i, I don't want to say it's a bomb like over a run was but it it wins games so thought i'd mention it uh i would say watch out but there's really nothing to watch out uh because it's it's happening and you will feel overwhelmed rangers guile nothing really new here the one one is nice but the hex proof is where it's at being able to protect your creatures is essential in any format and being able to give them a nice little plus one plus one in combat definitely helps as well but we both know it is the hex proof that is why this trick still gets played plummet takes out a flyer it seems to be that blue and white have a lot of flyers black has some flyers um I still don't think green has any flyers unless they uh, flip the script on us. I think red has some dragons as usual. So this is a main deckable card in this format, I feel, as one of, but it may be relegated or delegated to the sideboard for now. And I think that it stays there unless you're playing against a flying bomb or a lot of flyers and you just need a quick answer titanic growth is one of my favorite i don't know i just love the art on this it's like the dude's like oh yeah i'm safe with my little spear thing here and then it's like oh crap it's a giant dog wolf cat thing with fangs that's going to eat me and then he just looks back at his giant little spear thing and he's like uh f this i'm out um plus four plus four until end of turn is really really nice it kills almost anything uh it also is kind of a game changer where if you attack with two guys and they only have one blocker and before damage goes on that stack you just buff your guy plus four plus four you're probably gonna end the game Gather Courage, once again, that means we're moving on to black. Black, my favorite color. Okay, the removal in black this time around is kind of poop. Um, let's get to it. Covenant of Blood, four damage to target creature or player, and you gain four life. Yada yada, seven mana, lots and lots of mana for this type of effect. But I think it's still good enough to play as a one of, assuming that you are able to convoke this and deal some much needed damage throughout combat you could kind of finish it off it's kind of like a, a finishing blow i i don't love it but i i think it's acceptable as one of nobody's really going to get blown out by this if you're at four it's kind of like fingers crossed hope they don't play this card uh hope they think it's awful okay crippling blight minus one minus one is no joke it does kill some stuff uh, however it's the ability to prevent a large creature from blocking that makes it really really playable it's uh, an aura you know for what that's worth there's nothing really that gives you a bonus for playing auras that I'm aware of but it's kind of hard because if they're playing 
any type of bounds or anything like that it, it may end up falling off but you play it when they think they're safe and you smash through or you play it to kill something after combat during combat you can't really do it during uh, you wouldn't do it before unless you don't want it to block and you can play it to kill something small okay this is a rare cruel sadist I just love this card it's just like hey I'm looking very innocent lying on this tree with a little sickle oh crap you're dead um you get this downturn one you're kind of going to be winning the game you pay one life in a black you put a one one counter on it so it's growing obviously you could do that at end of turn to make it larger so every turn you can just get a gigantic uh creature you know over time and then if it really hits the fan you remove X one one counters from Cruel Sadist and it deals X damage to target creature. And then you can keep doing this. You can build it back up, build it back up. Now assuming you're paying a life every turn, if you have some life gain, it's really great. If you don't, it's still very good. Uh, it's no uh, Royal Assassin where it's just tap to destroy target tap creature, but it, it is uh, really nice. Uh, fester gloom minus one minus one until end of turn to all non-black creatures works really good with uh, turning things into frogs as I mentioned earlier it's a sorcery so you got to do it on your turn which makes it not amazing but being able to wipe out a whole bunch of tokens or weenie creatures is really nice it's okay after attacks and, and things like that but remember this will also get your creatures to assuming they are not black these creatures are black not oh man Borat jokes eight years later who doesn't love that flesh to dust is your quote unquote doom blade or better example murder in this set uh, five mana is just sad, sad times for black. Uh, great art, but it, you know, it, it's it's a removal spell. It's common. It costs five mana. Format's slower. It just takes out their best threat. Uh, you, you can't go wrong. You can make it, you know, less mana, and it would be even better. But five mana is, I don't want to say it's a bargain, but it's it's still solid. I would play two maybe three if i have some ramp it's just that good but you remember it's five mana in the hand if they have a curve of any sorts killing one of their threats isn't going to be that good okay in garrick's wake i just put this in i don't think you're going to be playing against this too often as it's a rare but it destroys all the other creatures and planeswalkers that you don't control so it's a one-sided super mega ultra wrath and you know just kind of like your whole side is just screwed there's nothing you could do about it garrick's going uh to the dark side and we all know that but uh don't get blown out by this i i wouldn't say you can even play around this card because it's just so stupidly absurdly costed at nine mana but if you think you're sitting pretty just be careful if they ever hit nine mana and you don't got them dead yet with all your creatures and planeswalkers necrobite something that's uh been getting a little bit more press in certain decks lately i know a few of the pros have been pushing it uh in the current uh theros block format saying it's really not that bad i don't think it's bad i never thought it was bad maybe that made me before my time um, being able to regenerate something is always nice uh, but being able to block give something you control death touch kill something else and regenerate your creature even if it's a lowly one one is a really sweet deal nightfire giant I covered in the cards I like uh, the only reason I put this in here is because if you have red mana and you're playing black it uh, deals two damage to target creature player over and over again shock 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 i mean sounds like that little john song shot 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 it's like shock 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 i mean assuming you have five mana every turn you can't you can't just shock for free stab wound is my favorite card because it always reminds me of the family guy episodes where peter griffin falls down and just holds his knee and he's like 
Uh, uh, but, you know, stab wound's great because it kills little things and it makes them lose two life at the beginning of their upkeep. So it's really fantastic. Kill things or just slowly suck the life out of them. Okay, Ulcerate is a great name for a card. Makes me get stressed out just thinking about it. Uh, it's sweet at one black mana. It kills things. It's great during combat. The only thing you do have to be worried about is you are losing three life. So it's really not that amazing against hyper aggressive decks where you may kill like a foundry street denizen that would have dealt you three damage over the course of two or three turns so it's worth it play them all play as many as you get uh just use them in a sense where you know you're not gonna kill yourself by losing the three life and that brings us back to covenant of blood which brings us to the end of this primer uh, don't get blown out is my advice for your pre-release. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. Please check out my retro gaming channel, uh, Retro Revenge, where I play against my friend Lawrence in a series of one-on-one -on -one video game uh, for the NES competitions. It's really fun. We're just having a blast. If you like game grumps or any of those let's play kind of deals, uh, this is not as good, but it, we're getting there. Definitely we're working on it. So check it out and make sure you support the channel and thank you for watching. Good luck at your pre-release.